Hi there, Steve Kaufman here. And today I want to talk about English. All right. The uh, most widely studied language in the world, the largest number of second language speakers. Uh, it's become the international language of communication and, and business and even science. So lots of people learning English. And I think lots of people are sort of stuck at a level in English where they would like to improve or that they don't feel satisfied with their level in English and they don't know how to go about improving. So um, we have um, a new employee, Anna, and I did a video a week ago with Anna and she's taking part in a 90 day challenge to work on her English. And so I had a session with her yesterday where I went over three um, bits of advice, three tips on things that she can do to improve our English. Uh, I don't know if, uh, if these will be, these tips will prove useful or not, but I thought I would share them with you as well. All right. Um, so I said to Anna and maybe Anna is typical of a lot of people. Her background is in digital marketing in Spain. She's going to help us. Uh, we went, we, um, the day before yesterday, we had a session three, four hours. We talked about uh, you know, what's known as onboarding and how, you know, at link we can try to do things that might make people want to join link more than what's happening right now on the site. So that was the nature of the meeting. She participated, she participated effectively, but I came away with uh, the sense that there are three areas where she could improve. And I think these, these three areas apply to other people. So first of all, I said to her, Number one is comprehension. Uh, there are moments when I can tell that she doesn't fully understand what we're saying or she has to ask for clarification. And so I said, you know, comprehension is more important than your ability to say things sort of totally without error fluently. If you are looking for words or if you have to go back and say it twice because we didn't fully understand what you said, that's less of a problem than when you don't understand because you can control what you're saying. You can see that people didn't fully understand. You can say it again. But if you don't understand, if you understand 85%, but you're missing 15%, very often that's a very important 15% and you just can't keep on asking, sorry, I beg your pardon, I didn't understand. So you have to focus first of all on comprehension. And therefore I recommended that she should have three kinds of content that she listens to and reads and that she works on in link. Number one is her professional content. So this is sometimes you have these courses, business English or whatever, academic English, uh, go find uh, content in your area of professional, you know, specialization expertise, uh, import these into link, study the words, the phrases, get all the key terminology as well as, you know, the phrasing that helps you introduce your thoughts. And you can glean these from this professional material. So that's the first kind of content that she should work on to improve her comprehension. The second is because I believe that a lot of language learning is connected with emotion. Go and find some content. It might be literature, something that you can really like and connect with on an emotional level. Could be a novel, could be anything. And, and I recommend that you have both the ebook so that you can read it and pick up words and increase your vocabulary and the audio that you can listen to and take yourself into another world, but you're totally relying on English in this case for her to take you there. So you're building sort of a, a, a sentimental connection to the language you're learning. I have always found that that was important in my learning. I can't, you can't just focus on the professional terminology. You kind of have to elevate your total level in the language. That's been my experience. So I said to her, so do one, your professional content two some content that you can fall in love with and three work the many stories that we have, because there you have all the basic structures, all of the most frequently used words, and you can listen to it over and over again. You can listen to it mechanically in the background while you're exercising. And the mini stories is more like going to the gym. In fact, it's just exercising in some of the more basic structures in the language. Okay. So I said, do these three things. Then that's going to help you in the second major point. So the first point was comprehension. The second point is pronunciation. 
Now she pronounces well enough that we understand. And, and in a way, that's the only thing that really matters. But most people want to pronounce better than that. And so the first thing I pointed out to her is that you have to divorce the way words are said from the way they are written. In Spanish, there's a direct connection between how words are written and how they're pronounced. That's not the case in English. And while people know that at some theoretical level, they don't necessarily apply it. And so she was saying things like answer instead of answer. And so I pointed out, you know, for example, answer. Uh, she would say, she might say turn and burn, but then when it comes to learn, because it's L-E-A-R-N, she would say learn. And I had to, again, I say focus on the fact that the, the writing system doesn't match the way words are pronounced. That was one thing. The second thing I said is focus on intonation. If you can get the intonation of the language, a lot of this other stuff will fall into place. Even your phrasing will fall into place. And so I recommended that she again, go on link, take a paragraph, begin by doing five second bursts because we can control the sound bar, repeat five seconds. And in that five seconds, don't worry about what you mispronounce as an individual word, but try to get the intonation of that five second bit then do it for a sentence and then do it for a whole paragraph and work on that for let's say 15 minutes just totally focusing on intonation then go and record yourself and compare yourself to the native speaker don't do it every time you know work on on getting yourself up to a certain level then compare you might be disappointed but if you do that every day for two weeks you will start to get closer to the intonation it's not a matter of eliminating all evidence of a foreign accent. That's not possible. It's not even desirable. In fact, a slight Spanish accent or French or whatever it might be is attractive in many ways if other things are there, like perhaps intonation, because it shows that you are trying to pronounce. You're making an effort to approach the language you're learning or to approach English. So two, work on intonation. And three, reminded her again that Unlike Spanish, you know, in English, the unstressed syllable, the vowel often disappears. We don't say important. We say important, uh, you know, comprehend. We don't say comprehension. We say comprehension. So that sometimes called the schwa, but why introduce new terms? Unstressed syllable, the vowel disappears. Just be aware of it. Notice it slowly. Hopefully that becomes part of your pronunciation. So that was the second point on pronunciation. And the third point is, phrasing. She has a lot of words. Uh, she can always find more words. I mean, we come across words that she hasn't heard before. One can always increase one's vocabulary. But like many people, she's making up the language as she goes along, finding the words often from her own language, translating some words, and putting them together, uh, you know, uh, and, and therefore delivering sort of an English structure that is based on Spanish patterns. So you have to work on getting English phrasing, English patterns. There again, I said, that's why you should work on the mini stories because it's simple content. There's not many words there that you don't know. It's everyday situations, a lot of repetition and just focus on the phrasing. Uh, when you listen and read, focus on phrases, then try use those, try to use those phrases. So that um, the goal in the listening and reading is to identify phrases, save them on link if you're in link, so that when you go to speak, you're now able to speak in, in ready-made, prefabricated phrases that are in fact English phrases, rather than having to take one word and another word and combine them in some way that corresponds to perhaps Spanish structure and therefore sounds clumsy in English. If you can have good comprehension if your pronunciation has more of a native intonation in English, and if you're able to use more natural phrasing, and again, we're not talking about perfection here, but as a direction to move into better comprehension, better intonation, and better phrasing, then your English will improve. So I look forward to your comments. And this applies, of course, to any language, but particularly to English, where so many people are at sort of an intermediate level where they would like to make a breakthrough to a higher level. Thank you for listening. Bye for now.